Hi everybody. I hope everybody is having a good day. I hope you're having a good Friday morning or Friday afternoon or Friday evening. We will get started in about 30 seconds. As you can see, I was surprised because I was doing a few things and then all of a sudden I realized it was only five minutes to go and we would be starting. So, uh, I almost forgot to start on time. I was a little bit a uh, little bit busy. Anyways, we'll start in about eight or nine seconds. Sounds like the audio is working well. I'll just bump my microphone around a little bit there and well, hello and welcome to this English lesson on how to describe work. Uh many of us have jobs. Um when you go to work, there's different kinds of work that you do and there are different ways to describe work in English. So, this English lesson will be about how to describe the work you do if you're a teacher. How to describe the work you do if you are a construction worker. How to describe the work you do if you are a pilot. So, I'm not going to be talking about the actual jobs but I'm going to be talking about how to describe those jobs. How to describe the work that you do when you're at work and uh, I think it will be a pretty fun lesson. I think you will enjoy it. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about describing work. Before we get started, just a few things. Uh my camera actually shut off briefly. So, hopefully, it works for the whole lesson. I do wanna say hi to a bunch of people. Hi to Paco San and Eugene. Dave and Todd are here, of course. Hi to Brent from Speak English with this guy. Rod from Rod the English teacher. Adi the Thai. Freddie Wolf, Lolly Lolly, Naomi, uh Eugene. I think I said Eugene already. Maybe I didn't. Patana and so many other people here ready to learn English. I hope that uh, you enjoy it. Hi to Tony as well and Wanda Prado. As I scroll back, I see a few more familiar names. Hi to Yaroslav uh Basarab. Hi, Yaroslav. Good to see you as well. Um I hope oh, I think Ruslan's here too when I scrolled back and Alex and Silly Drop and Peace Out and At this point in time, I'm going to stop saying hi to people and we'll get the lesson started in just a moment. Remember, if you have questions, there is a link. Please use the link to ask the question uh, and make sure it's on topic and uh, on the topic of describing work and uh, if you want to have fun English conversations in the chat, please do so. Please enjoy not only my lesson but when I get a little bit boring, please enjoy chatting with the other people in English in the chat. I'm sure that you will have a good time no matter what if you do that but uh, let's get this lesson started. So, one of the ways that we describe work is to say that it is fast paced. Whenever I think of fast paced work, I usually think of people who work in the stock market. People who are stock brokers and buy and sell Mm -hmm. stocks. The reason we would call this kind of job fast paced is because there's something happening all the time. They have to watch the price of the stocks. They buy and sell stocks. If you're not familiar with the stock market, I apologize but if you look at people who work at the Toronto Stock Exchange or the New York Stock Exchange, it looks like a very fast paced job. They watch the graphs. They watch the prices of things and they buy things and sell things. I I think they do it all on computer now but in my mind, it's still something where they yell at each other to buy things. So, it's definitely a fast paced job. Now, another type of job would be monotonous. When a job is monotonous, it usually means that for the entire work day, you do the same thing. So, a monotonous job would be a job like if you work on an assembly line. Maybe it's your job to put one small part on a car every time the car goes by and you do that for eight or nine hours a day. We would say the job is monotonous. So, a monotonous job is a job where you do the same thing all the time. Teaching is not monotonous until you have to grade a huge pile of student work. When I have to grade 30 tests, that's a little bit monotonous but usually teaching is the opposite. It's usually quite fun and uh, there's a lot of variety. Exciting. So, an exciting job would be I would think any job where you are maybe in an airplane or in a helicopter. Uh maybe even a job like um I'm trying to think of other exciting jobs like a race car driver would have an exciting job. 
Um when I go to Niagara Falls, there are helicopters and you can f- go on a helicopter to see the na- see the waterfall from the air and I always think that pilot has an exciting job. That would be a fun job to have. We also have what are called physically demanding jobs. So, in this picture, you can see these two guys are drilling holes and they're pushing up and that job would be considered physically demanding. You need muscles to do a job like that. You have to be strong. Here, I'll go to you have to be strong (laughs) to do a job like that Um, and so, we would call it physically demanding. A bricklayer has a physically demanding job. They have to lift bricks and blocks all day. A construction worker has a physically demanding job. They need to hammer and carry wood. They have to do things that are very, very physical. So, some jobs can be described as physically demanding. Um teaching is not physically demanding. (laughs) This is not physically demanding at all. Another type of job uh or another way to describe a job would be to say it is boring. Someone might say they have a boring job. Now, I would think this person, this is a lifeguard. I don't think their job is boring but in the picture, I noticed that there's no one swimming. So, I think if a lifeguard is watching a beach or a pool and there are no swimmers, the job is probably really boring. Um that was the best picture I could find for boring job. I'm sure when there are lots of people swimming in the ocean, this job is actually quite challenging and we'll get to that word in a bit but when there's no one swimming, I think the job is probably a little bit boring. So, challenging. When you describe a job as challenging, it doesn't mean that the work itself is physically demanding necessarily. It might mean that for instance, in this picture, Maybe this person's job is that they are a photographer um and it would be challenging because sometimes it rains and sometimes the weather is bad and their job is to get a good picture of something. So, it could be challenging because they have to take their equipment out in the rain. They have to find the right time of day to do it. So, we would call that a challenging job um and I would say this as well. Teaching can be challenging. Sometimes, the conditions aren't right for teaching. Maybe students don't like the teacher. Maybe you have a student who doesn't want to learn. So, teaching as well can be described as challenging sometimes. Hard. We just straight up use the word hard sometimes to describe work. Usually, we use this word to describe work that is also physically demanding but if you were to say farming is hard work, um working in a car factory is hard work, Um bricklaying is hard work. What we mean by that is that at the end of the day, you're going to be really, really tired like physically tired because you were lifting and moving things all day. Um you could also use this to describe other jobs like I think you could say like being a doctor is hard work um because there's a lot of mental challenges throughout the day as well um but definitely if you were this guy, (laughs) I would say he has a hard job and I would say that is really, really hard work. Engaging. So, when you have work that is engaging, when your job is engaging, um it means that you really like it. It means that you're probably connecting and talking with people a lot. It also can mean that you just really like what you're doing. So, let's say you're a scientist and you love researching um cures for different diseases. You could say that you find the work very engaging. It's very engaging work. Your mind is very much enjoying doing the research. It's very engaging. You could also say that maybe you're someone like this person. Maybe you're leading a conversation class and you find it very engaging because you like talking to people and so you feel connected when you're doing it. So, it's always nice If I was to choose, I'd rather have a job that's really engaging than hard. That's my preference. An engaging job is usually also something that you like to do. Cutting edge. So, when you have a cutting edge job, you're probably working with technology. 
In this picture, you can see that there is a bunch of computer code on the screen. When you work in a cutting edge field, when you work at a job where it's cutting edge work, it means that you are doing some of the coolest stuff. If you were someone who made computer games and if you were making computer games for people to play with a VR headset, this is my uh this is my VR headset. We would say that you're doing cutting edge game design because you're designing the next um types of games that people will be playing. Not the old games that people just play on a computer or on their phone. So, a cutting edge job is a job that um definitely involves a lot of technology and uh involves doing things that are relatively new. When you explain your job to people, they might not understand what you do because it's so new. Um a cutting edge job. We also have jobs that are just dirty jobs. In fact, I think there's a TV show about this called Dirty Jobs where uh the person Mike Rowe, I think that's the name of the show. He goes and he does jobs that are very dirty. A dirty job is any job where at the end of the day, you need to wash your hands and have a shower. So, farming is a dirty job. Um when I was a construction worker, it was sometimes a dirty job. Um sometimes people have to clean out different things and it's a dirty job. At the end of the day, their hands are very dirty and they need to wash their hands and definitely have a shower. So, how do you know if you have a dirty job? If you have to wash your hands before lunch, you have a dirty job. And then we also have jobs that are repetitive. So, a repetitive job, this is similar to a job that is monotonous. So, when a job is monotonous, you do the same thing all day. But when you have a job that is repetitive, it's the same thing. So, if you work in a place where you make cars, you have a repetitive job. Your job is very repetitive. You probably put the door on the car and you put two bolts in and then the car goes away and the next car comes and you put a door on the car and you put two bolts in and the car goes away and the next car comes and then you put a door on the car. I think you get the point. I'm getting a little repetitive as I talk about it. Uh repetitive jobs can be very straightforward. It can be very easy to train someone to do a repetitive job but they're definitely not very engaging. You might be a little bit um tired of the monotony at the end of the day. Hey, let's look at some questions before we move on. For those of you who are new here, I teach for 10 minutes. I do questions for 10 minutes. We will start the lesson again in about 10 minutes and I just kind of alternate between both things. So, we will get back to the lesson in a bit. Um let me just get the first question. We have a few question. Um few questions. Ruslan, hello teacher Bob. Hi, Ruslan. How are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you? I hope you're doing well. How would you describe an employee who could always find a solution even if others think it's impossible? Um ingenious is one word like ah, oh, he's very ingenious which means that they're good at thinking uh about things. Um how else would I describe a worker like that? Um motivated, um creative. We also use the word creative for someone who can easily find solutions. Let me just make sure um make sure I use that word quite. Ingenious. A person who is clever, original and inventive. For some reason, I also thought it sounded funny when I said that but yes, that's the word that I would use. Um Yaroslav. Morning, the wisest teacher Bob. Question is over here. Hope you are doing well. How to describe work So, how to describe work that we put lots of effort in. Thank you. Take care. I would say it's very demanding work. I would say it's very um uh difficult would be a a good way to say it as well. Um but when you put lots of effort, you could say it takes all my time and energy to do the job. That's another way to describe it. But great question. To describe work, you put lots of effort into. I let me look over my list to see if there's another word. I would say demanding. Like we have physically demanding but you can also say demanding. Um yeah. I'll I'll I we might I might think of another word at some point but I'm gonna move to the next question. Hopefully, that works for you, Yaroslav. Uh Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. How would you describe a person who has been coasting along or running on autopilot at work after many years at the same position? Thank you. 
So, we say people rest on their laurels. So, when you rest on your laurels, it means you've worked really hard for 20 years and now you don't work as hard because you feel like you um you worked hard enough and now you don't need to. It's bad idea by the way. Um we also say that um ah he's just kind of lazy now because he feels like he's put his time in. So, he's done what he needs to do but your two words are actually quite common as well. He's just coasting or he's just on autopilot. Um He's no longer engaged with his work. He's just on autopilot. So, your two words are actually great as well, Henry. Uh let's see here. Azam says, hi, the best teacher. How do you describe a flower farmer's winter schedules and duties? So, winter schedules for the farm. Early winter is still about cleanup. So, in November and early December, we are still cleaning up the farm. The most of the work, the most. Most of the work we do, I should use proper English when I teach English. Most of the work we do is clean up. In January and February, most of the work that Jen is doing right now is seeding. She's actually planting seeds in trays in our basement and those plants will eventually go outside and they will be planted in the soil. Uh let me see here. Um Maria C says, nice snowy day yesterday to speak. Oh, she's talking to Brent. Very cool. Brent says from speak English with this guy, dirty jobs with Mike Rowe is a great series. My son and I watched it all the time. Yeah. So, Mike Rowe in that, thanks Brent for uh yeah, that is it. Dirty jobs, right? It's a good, it's a good show. He just, he went to a farm once. He goes in a factory. He cleaned out a sewer once. That was really gross. Uh let's see here. Kimmy and Kiwi from Korea. Hi, Bob. What does get a leg up in company mean? Can you also explain freelance jobs? I'm grateful for your channel as always. When you get a leg up, anytime you use phrases like that, it means that you're getting an advantage on someone. When you get a leg up in a company, maybe you've done, maybe you and another person want the same promotion and if you do a whole bunch of really good work over six months, you'll have a leg up on them. It means that you are more likely to be chosen. Uh and then a freelance job. A freelancer is someone who works for themselves and then people hire them to do jobs. So, here's the difference. At my school, when we want someone to take really good uh photographs, we hire a freelance photographer to come in for the day. The person doesn't work for the school every day. They have a photography business and people can hire them. So, businesses businesses can call them and say, can you come for three hours and take some photos of our new products? So, that person is a freelance photographer. They don't work for one specific company. They hire themselves out to work for many. Uh let's see here. Amex says, hi, Bob. How to express that I'm bored with my work. Congrats on the million subs. Well, thank you for the congratulations. Uh you would just say, oh, my job is so, it's monotonous or it's boring. Uh, or it's tedious. I think we're gonna look at tedious later. Um but yeah, I would just describe it as um boring is probably the best one. <laughs> if you are you had the right word there in the first place. Ah, uh, my job is so boring. That would be how a teenager might describe working at a fast food restaurant. My job is so boring. My boss is so annoying. Uh let's see here. Taihoa says, hello, dear teacher Bob. My question today is how do you describe a secret mission? Thanks for the answer. Well, I'm not a spy and I've never been a spy. So, all of my information comes from watching movies (laughs) and so, I would think they just call it a secret mission or your mission if you choose to accept it. Um so, I don't know a lot, Taiho, about secret missions but uh Sometimes at work, someone might have a secret project like, oh, I'm just working on a secret project. You'll find out at the next staff meeting. So, uh let's see here. Winter Wright says, hi, Bob. Someone needs to put up with customer's anger and scolding most of the time. How can we describe this kind of job? So, I don't have this on the list but we have what's called, you know, customer facing positions. Um I don't use that phrase very often but When you are someone who is talking directly to customers, we would say you have a customer facing job and I would say the person who handles customers anger and scolding is most often a manager. So, most often when a customer gets upset, the worker will say, let me get my manager. 
or the customer who is angry might say, I want to talk to your manager. From Yoyana, hope I pronounced that right. Hi, Bob. Thank you for your time. How can I describe many tasks in an administrative position? From Peru, I send you a huge hug. Thank you and thanks again. So, I think in an administrative position, you just have yeah, a lot of little jobs to do all day. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it but you're definitely um probably the best phrase would say this. There's a lot of moving pieces. So, when we say um oh, there's a lot of moving pieces at my job, it means you're doing a whole bunch of little things at once and administrators tend to do that. They tend to be very very busy doing a lot of small tasks. Freddie the Frenchie, hi, Bob. Hope you're well. Yes, I am. How do you describe people, the people which their work is like their job as a painter, a writer, a soccer or tennis player and so on? Many, many things. Yeah, in English, we often do that, right? I'm a teacher and I teach. He is a soccer player. He plays soccer. He is a painter because he paints. She is a writer. She writes. So, often our um noun to describe the job is a version of the verb that describes what they do. Even things like construction worker, he does construction work. Um and so, a pilot flies a plane though. So, it kind of falls apart there. Um but there is no general way to describe people whose job is like their work. Um they basically do they have the name we have for the job is the same as the action they do. Um Brent says in the chat, if it's a secret mission, you shouldn't describe it. It's it's a secret. Yes, that's very true. Uh and backing up, uh, T says, hi, Mr. Bob, how are you? What is the hardest job for you? The hardest job for me is physical labor right now. I'm I'm not the strongest person in the world. Uh by the end of the summer, I usually am feeling a bit stronger though. Um and Alex gave a good phrase there. Um and it's I'm wearing a lot of hats. So, back to the last question, that would be a good way to describe an administrative person. They might be wearing a lot of hats meaning they have a lot of different types of jobs to do. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. Where are my slides? Repetitive, we just finished off. There we go. Stressful. Now, I put a picture of something that I think is very stressful. Um I'm afraid of heights. I wouldn't want to be the person who works for the Coast Guard and goes out of a helicopter on a rope to rescue people. That would be stressful. But almost any job can be described as stressful. Um oh, sorry. Almost any job can be described as stressful. <laughs> Just repeated myself there word for word. Um You could say that teaching is stressful. You could say working in a bank is stressful. You could say working in a restaurant as a a waiter or waitress is very stressful. It really just depends on your boss and how much you get paid and what the what work is like for you day to day. Um a bad boss can make any job very very stressful. You could also say that your job is rewarding. Uh a rewarding job is a job where you feel good at the end of the day because you've helped people in their lives. Um or maybe um you help someone and a few years later they come back and tell you. So, generally when your job is rewarding, it's a job at least for me, it's a job where you help people. Teaching is rewarding. Sometimes students come back and tell you that they really appreciated you when they had you as a teacher. I think being a doctor or nurse can be very rewarding when you uh operate on someone as a doctor and they come back to you later and say, thank you so much. You saved my life. That just gives you a really, really nice feeling. Um but even things like farming can be rewarding. You can feel good because you grow food for people. So, definitely, I I think this one's a little broader than I initially said. I think you can use this for a lot of different jobs. You could say that uh driving an Uber is rewarding because you enjoy driving your car and helping people get where they need to go. So, I guess as long as you like your job, you could say it's rewarding. Glamorous. I have never had a glamorous job. Movie stars have glamorous jobs. Models have glamorous jobs. I guess when you're someone who can act and maybe you're really good looking, you can become a model or a 
um, or a celebrity of some kind and maybe you have a very glamorous job. You wear expensive clothes. People always wanna take your picture. You have paparazzi following you around. We would definitely say that you have a glamorous job. Um, and uh, I've, <laughs> I've, I've never had a glamorous job. <laughs> um, I think you get to drive sports cars and I'm just guessing what it's like to have a glamorous job but uh, that's my uh, that's my interpretation of it. You might have a job that you would consider life-saving like he does life-saving work or that nurse, she does life-saving work or my doctor, she does life-saving work. When you are doing life-saving work, it literally means the work you do saves people's lives. So, if you were um, a paramedic, we would say, oh, my sister, she's a paramedic. She does life-saving work. So, she's constantly uh, saving people's lives. I really appreciate doctors and nurses and paramedics and firefighters and all of the people that do life-saving work in the world. I just appreciate all of them. But we also have jobs that are thankless. When a job is thankless, it means that um people aren't always happy when you do your job. The reason I put a picture of a police officer is when you get a speeding ticket, um when you're driving too fast and you get pulled over and you get a speeding ticket, I don't think people thank the police officer for giving them a speeding ticket. I think more often it is a thankless job where you're giving speeding tickets so people slow down so the world is safer but I think most people get angry when they get a speeding ticket or a lot of people get angry when they get a speeding ticket. It's a thankless job. Lonely. So, some jobs you do with lots of other people. I don't have a lonely job. I work with over 25 other teachers and I have students in my classroom uh, every day all the time. It's not a lonely job but I often feel like truck driving would be a bit of a lonely job. If you uh, were a truck driver, you're often on the road for days at a time by yourself. So, I think it's a very lonely job. Some people really like having lonely jobs. Some people love being by themselves. They love being on the open road. They love solitude. Solitude is the how we describe being by yourself. Like, I do like solitude a bit but I also like that I have a job where there's lots of people around but some jobs you could describe as lonely jobs. We use the word tough too. This is a very generic way to talk about almost any kind of work. It's similar to physically demanding but it can also be used to describe jobs that are mentally demanding. Like I could say um you know if I was teaching uh, at a school where um the students really didn't wanna learn. I could say, I have a really tough job but usually when I think of tough job, I think of um firefighters. I think of people who have to solve problems. Like I think if you were a tow truck driver, a tow truck is the truck they use to pick up vehicles and if you had to get vehicles out of the ditch, like maybe a truck falls over. Last weekend on the bridge, Uh, that goes across Lake Ontario. A truck fell over on the Skyway Bridge. So, I think it's a tough job if you're the person who has to lift that truck up if you're a tow truck driver. Definitely, some jobs are very, very tough jobs. Hectic. I really like this English word. In fact, people have asked, what are your favorite sounding English words? And I, I don't always know what to say but I love the word hectic. Because it, to me, it kind of sounds like what it means. A hectic job is a very, very busy job. The best example I can think of is working in a fast food restaurant. Uh, years ago, I worked in a restaurant when I lived in Quebec City and it was very, very hectic. I worked the night shift. When you say a job is hectic, it means you have to work really fast. It means it can be a little bit confusing. It can mean even that it's loud. So, it's like, loud and busy and you have to work fast and it's kind of overwhelming a little bit but a hectic job definitely I would say uh anytime you are serving food or working in a restaurant, the job is probably very, very hectic especially around lunchtime and around supper time. That's when it would probably be the most hectic. 
We have something in English called grunt work. I'm not sure if Brett's still here but I wanted to ask Brett if uh, he uses this term. We use the term grunt work to talk about any kind of work that doesn't require very much thinking and just requires a lot of strength. So, shoveling is considered grunt work. If you had to dig a hole with a shovel, we would say that it's grunt work. Um on the farm, there's a lot of grunt work and that's again work where you don't have to be you don't have to use your brain very much to do it but you definitely use your muscles. It's similar to physically demanding but the difference is that grunt work does not require a lot of thinking. You can have a physically demanding job where you still have to be thinking all the time about what you're doing but when you do grunt work, you usually don't need to think very much. You just grab a shovel and you move dirt from one place to another. Let me get back to here we go. Entry level. So, an entry level job or if you have an entry level position, it means that you're just starting at that place of work. So, if you just start a job, we would say it's an entry level position. If you apply to work in an office building, you'll probably start with an entry level position. You might be someone's assistant. You might be just working in the mail room delivering mail. You won't have a really important job. You'll have an entry level job which is kind of at the beginning. It's the bottom step as you can see with this guy here. And sometimes we have work that you would describe as voluntary. So, we have work that is done by volunteers. Um someone might say for instance to my mom, oh, do you get paid a lot at your job? And my mom would say, oh, no, no, it's voluntary. Um I volunteer at that store. So, my mom volunteers at a store where um she does work that we would consider voluntary. That's how we would describe it. Hey, let's do some members only. I see Brent in the chat from Speak English with this guy saying, yes, we use grunt work. The American military sometimes calls people who are newly enlisted grunts. Oh, yeah. So, I didn't explain with grunt work. A grunt is like <clears throat> when you make that sound and when you do grunt work, you probably grunt a lot. That's probably where the word comes from a little bit. Hey, anyways, let me turn on what's going to happen now for those of you that aren't familiar is chat is going to become members only for about eight to ten minutes. The lesson will continue. So, don't leave if you're not a member. Uh just enjoy maybe me answering some questions. I'll answer these as well and the lesson will continue in about ten minutes. So, hang in there. Let me uh let me find some questions and answer some questions from the chat and we will get back to the lesson in about eight or nine minutes. Uh Eveline over here says, where what is the difference? Little fix there. What is the difference between demanding and engaging? When a job is engaging, it means you really, really like doing it and a good explanation would be um time goes really fast when a job is engaging because you're like you like doing the job so much and your brain is engaged that all of a sudden you look up and it's the end of the workday. Demanding simply means you either need a lot of muscles or a lot of brain power or both like the job just takes all of your energy. So, at the end of the day, if your job is demanding, you're probably very tired and exhausted. At the end of the day, if your job is engaging, you're probably quite happy, I would say. Over in the chat, uh Adi the Thai says, hi, Bob. What are you gonna call my job? Before eight years, I was a businessman for 30 years and three years ago, I was an English teacher for a few little kids until now. Two hours per day and five days a week. If you are working two hours a day, five days a week, we would say you are working part time or in my area, we sometimes say part time casual. Um part time means you you work less than eight or nine hours a day. Part time casual means you work whenever they ask you to work, I think. Uh let's see here. Maria C says, hi, Bob with the wave. Hi, Maria. Is it the same to say that you're stressed and stressed out? And if you say you're on demand, meaning that people contact you anytime, any day, is that right? Yes. So, if you are stressed or stressed out, it is exactly the same. Like, oh, something's going wrong. I'm so stressed or something's going wrong. I'm stressed out. They would mean the same thing. My eyes got really big there. That looks strange. Um and 
on demand. Yeah, we don't really use the word on demand. We use on call and I don't know if that's kind of a Canadian thing or not but my sister who is a nurse sometimes she's on call. That means she has to be ready to go to work at any time of day or night. She'll be on call for the weekend. So, um but we also have part-time casual which means your boss can call you and say, hey, can you work tomorrow? And then you can say yes or no. Key Park. Hi, Bob. How do you describe a YouTuber's work? Thank you. I would say it's rewarding. For me, it's rewarding. Um I get a lot of really nice comments. So, it makes me feel good. Uh I would say it's challenging. Sometimes it's hard to come up with ideas. Uh some YouTubers struggle with thinking of what to make videos on. Um and then I I wouldn't say it's cutting edge but it's definitely a very technological job. That would be another way to describe it. Um I just have to cough for a sec. Sorry. Um lolly lolly in the chat. My job is demanding, challenging but rewarding too. I love it. I'm a mental health nurse. So, yes, those are great Great ways of describing and that's a great sentence. So, it's demanding. That means at the end of the day, sometimes lolly lolly is probably like, whoo, I'm really tired. The job took a lot out of me today like energy wise. Challenging. She probably has to solve things and figure things out and deal with people. Um sometimes people can be challenging but rewarding because she's helping people. Very cool. Uh let's see here. So, Maria says, hi, Bob. You are the best teacher ever. Please advise how to say when a person works one month and rests one month. Thank you. So, a job like that, we would say I work on and off. So, I work one month and then I take a month off. Um we would say the job is sometimes we say a job is cyclical but don't use that word. That's I that's just me, I think. But I would say she works on and off. Um or her schedule is one month on, one month off. That's how I would describe a job like that. Uh lolly lolly elle a dit merci Bob pour ta réponse. Pas de problème. And let's see here. TKU's Betty, how would you describe your work both online and offline? Have a great one, Bob. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Like I kind of have an online job which what I like doing YouTube and sometimes I teach remotely because of the pandemic. Um how would I describe it? Yeah, I for teaching I would say this. I like it that it's all in-person teaching right now. I don't like remote teaching. So, that's how I would describe that part but how would I I I guess I have a real world job. My teaching at school, that's a real world job and then this is kind of um how would I describe this? The YouTube job. It's kind of a uh, an online job. I guess that's what I would say. I have online work and real world work. Uh let's see. Um Stacy. Hi, teacher Bob. How can I call work or what can I call work that affects society in a bad way? This kind of jobs are not illegal but a lot of people hate it and think it has to be banned. Yeah, we would say um yeah, how would I describe? the? I'm trying to the word's not coming to me. I know exactly what you mean though. Um when someone does like when a company instead of you know taking maybe they pollute and we would say that it's not good for the environment. They just dump their garbage in the river and maybe it's not illegal in that country but it's also not good. I can't think of it, Stacy. Sorry. Um and uh yeah, I'm sorry. You stumped me. Bob the Canadian is stumped. Uh let's see here. Brett from Speak English with this guy says, my school got rid of masks on Wednesday. It was a great feeling. Uh yeah, we are March 21st, Brent. We uh lose our masks. So, we're looking forward to it. Maria C says to Brent, wow, that's great news. Um let's see. Rodion says, hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Could you tell me about the myths in an interview for a job in Canada? Um I don't know a lot about job interviews in Canada other than I did make a video once on the typical questions. I did a lot of research but I personally haven't been in a job interview for decades. So, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the truths and myths are Rodion about uh job interviews. Uh let's see here. I'm gonna go back to the chat. Freddie Wolf says, hey, Bob, no further questions today. Just thanks for your awesome and amazing work that are other nice words to describe the job that our Bob does. No problem, Freddie. 
Um, and my co my Kalo is the word workaholic in English rare. I think you missed an R. It's a person who works a lot and what are the synonyms for this word? I'm fixing some things there. Thanks. So, it is workaholic. The spelling over there is somewhat incorrect. Uh, maybe someone can type it in the chat correctly. Workaholic. We do just use the word workaholic. Yep. He's a workaholic. She's a workaholic. That is the most common way to describe someone who works too much. They're just working all the time. Uh let me see here. Um I think I think I'm clicking all the wrong buttons. Zaza, hi, Master Bob. How to describe overwhelming words? And if you wanna give examples, I will be very grateful. Well, if you're talking about work, you could say my job is exhausting. My job is overwhelming. We also say things like I just can't take it anymore. When something is very stressful or overwhelming, that phrase is pretty common. Like how's work? Oh, I just can't take it anymore. It's too hard. It's too tough. It's overwhelming. Um so that is how I would use that word related to work, Zaza. I hope that helps and answers your question. Um let me see here. I'm going to turn off members only chat and I'm going to thank all of my members. I'm going to have a sip of water. Uh thanks, Maria C. That is correct. Workaholic. Um Yes, thanks for being members. I do know that there are many of you who are members and I really, really appreciate the support you give. For anyone who's interested, how do you support me um doing YouTube? Well, there's a couple things you can do. Some cost nothing. Number one, you can just watch my videos from start to end and give them a like. That actually helps. Number two, you can watch my videos a second time a day later. That really helps you and me. Um what else can you do? You can share my videos with other people like send them a link and say here's a guy on YouTube. Um all of those things are free. All of those things are helpful for me. If you want to support me further though, you can click the join button below uh and you can uh watch a little video that explains what I do if you uh join and become a member. So, think about that. You get your name in green. You get an extra video. You get a crown by your name in chat uh and a few other little extra things that I think are helpful. Oh, and one other way you can support me is if you look below, there's a link to a website called Preply and if you wanted to sign up to get a tutor, I get a tiny little bit of money from that. It's kinda nice. It's a little little bonus at the end of the month. So, um what are we doing though? We need to finish off this lesson, don't we? Peace work. So, peace work is not getting paid by the hour. Piecework is not when you have a salary. A salary is when a company pays you a certain amount of money for the year. When you work by the hour, you get a certain amount of money each hour. When you do piecework, you get a certain amount of money for each little thing you do. When I was a kid, I picked cucumbers and it was piecework and I got paid for every 10 cucumbers I picked, I got 25 cents, I think. So, instead of being paid like five dollars an hour to pick cucumbers, I was picked, I was paid, I was picked. I was paid by the amount of cucumbers that I picked. So, that's why I put a piece of fruit here. Often, people who pick fruit um are paid by piecework although I'm not sure piecework is legal in Canada anymore. I should check into that. When I was a kid, it was legal and it might still be legal but uh it's when you um it's when you get paid for every part of the job you do instead of getting paid by the hour. Tedious. So, how would I describe a job that's tedious? For me, a job that is tedious would also probably be repetitive and it would probably be somewhat challenging as well. Like, you would need a certain amount of skill. If I needed to sew a button on a shirt. If that was my job, sewing buttons on shirts, I would find it very tedious because I would have to like look really closely at what I was doing and I would have to be able to put the needle in and out precisely and I would have to do the same thing over and over again. So, I would definitely consider that job tedious. That to me would be a very tedious job. Difficult, requiring lots of skill. You would need to focus really hard when you do a tedious job. Um repetitive and all those other words as well. Dangerous. 
teaching is not a dangerous job at least for me but if you are someone who works on electric electrical wires <laughs> I want to say hydro wires but that's that's kind of an Ontario Canadian way to describe it. So, um if you work if you climb telephone poles or um electric poles and you work re- really high up in the sky you would describe that job as dangerous. Um if you are a helicopter pilot you have a dangerous job. If you are a race car driver you have a dangerous job. If you work like this person way up in the sky you have a dangerous job. We had the word demanding earlier when we talked about physically demanding. When a job is physically demanding you're basically using your muscles all day but we can also just use the word demanding to describe a job where you're it's it's kind of the opposite of a relaxing job. So, a relaxing job would be a lifeguard watching a pool and there's only about five or six people there. That might be fairly relaxing. You're sitting out in the sun and enjoying yourself but a demanding job this is a great picture. There's phone calls. There's emails. There's text messages. There's people who wanna talk to you and you have to go to five meetings in the day. That job would be very very demanding. Full time. So, a full time job in Ontario, Canada is eight to nine hours per day, five days per week. Generally, if you have a full time job, you work Monday through Friday um and you work from I don't know eight to four, eight to five. Maybe you work nine to five. It's usually eight or nine hours and it's usually about five days per week. Um so, I have a full time job. I work about sorry, actually I work part time. I should take that back. I work I actually have I work 80 percent. So, you would call that part time but I'll talk about that in a moment. Um when I was full time, I worked every day from 8 30 till 5 30. Um so, it's just a normal length day. A full time job. A part time job however is a job that uh you don't do every day or if you do it every day, you don't work eight to nine hours. So, a part time job you might be a waiter. So, you might work on Friday, Saturdays because those are the busy days. Maybe you just work two days a week. When maybe you work every day but you only work a four hour shift um or the example we had earlier, someone asked a question about you know if you're just working two hours a day, five days a week. All of that would be considered part time. So, full time is usually 40 hours per week in Ontario, Canada. Um and that adds up if you do the math there, 40 to 45 hours a week and part time is anywhere from a couple hours a week right up to even 35 hours a week would be considered part time. A side hustle. So, this is a relatively new term in English just in the last few years. A side hustle means you have a job but you do something else on the side to make a little bit of extra money. So, for many people, they have a job and their side hustle might be making YouTube videos. You could say that I have a job teaching and I have a side hustle and that I make YouTube videos. So, this lady I found, maybe she has a job but at night, maybe she makes videos. She makes cooking videos and she puts them on YouTube to make a little bit of extra money. That would be her side hustle. So, uh, again, this is a somewhat new term just in the last five years or so, side hustle but uh, a job that you do on the side to make some extra money. We also have work that we describe as honest work. Um generally, honest work refers to jobs that have been around for a long time. They're usually jobs where there's some physical aspect to it. So, you would say like farming is honest work or you would say um the opposite would be like a used car salesman. We would not call that honest work. Um although I do respect used car salesmen, um there is kind of this feeling that used car salesmen are trying to get your money. Um so, farming is honest work or teaching is honest work. Any kind of work where there's nothing sneaky or anything about it and you're doing something that's good for society, we would call it honest work. And this is a great word um to talk about work that makes you very very tired at the end of the day. So, sometimes when you have a job like teaching, 
you have students who aren't very nice and at the end of the day, you have no energy left because the job is very, very draining. Um you could even use this to describe working in a store where it's really busy. Anytime a job is very busy and you come home really tired and exhausted, you might be physically exhausted, you might be mentally exhausted, you have no um energy at all, you just flop on the couch, we would say that you definitely have a job that is draining. Um I don't know if this person's job is draining. She doesn't look too stressed doing her job but she's definitely working and uh maybe she's teaching online and maybe she has um you know one hour sessions for ten hours straight and when she's all done uh teaching English for the day, she is drained. Her job is very very draining. Nerve racking. I was trying to think of a job that I would consider nerve racking. I am like I said afraid of heights. If I had to work really high up in the sky, if I was someone who was a crane operator, I would find the job very nerve racking. When a job is nerve racking, it actually makes you not necessarily nervous but like a little bit afraid and you have a lot of anxiety and you're you're just maybe you're not sure how to do the job properly and maybe your boss is yelling at you or maybe you have to work somewhere where you're a little bit you know afraid of heights or something like that. We would call that job nerve wracking. Um for me as a teacher, when we have parent teacher interview evening, that's a little nerve wracking for me because I have to talk to parents about their kids. And then we have risky. So, a job can be risky when you have to work high up in the sky. A job can be risky when there is the possibility of injury. Um maybe you work in a large factory around a lot of machinery. We would say it's a very risky job. Uh this person is working up on a roof. There is always the possibility of slipping and falling. So, the job is very very risky. Um so, a risky job has an element of danger to it. It is a slightly just a little bit of a dangerous job. I definitely would not do uh, I I'm not interested in having a risky job at all. Hey, I'm gonna pop over and finish off the questions. I think there's a few left. Let me find those and we will answer them. I was just noticing in the chat, Brent saying, teaching in a classroom is draining in my opinion. Draining but rewarding. Yes. And again, the unique thing about teaching is it depends on your students. Some years I have a class that's very draining and some years I have classes that aren't. It just kind of depends on how many students you have and how nice they are. <laughs> uh okay, let's do some questions. Nikita, good afternoon, dear teacher. Please tell me how to prepare yourself for an interview so as not to feel stressed. Do you have any special techniques? Yes, do some mock interviews with people beforehand. If you have a friend or a brother or sister who can pretend to interview you, that can really calm you down and certainly prepare for the interview. Watch a few YouTube videos on how to get ready for a job interview or figure out what kinds of questions are commonly asked. But the reality is you can only do so much and then you just gotta go for the interview. Um let's see here from Apple. Hi, Bob. I'm curious again about jobs in Canada. Are there any jobs you think are not paid enough? There are some um but we have what's called minimum wage in Ontario, Canada and all the other provinces. So, minimum wage is fifteen dollars per hour and I think that's that's fairly good for someone who's working part time. Um I think we should have another minimum wage for people working full time who have children so that they get paid a bit better but it's tricky, right? Um okay, I'm gonna skip the next question because it's not on topic. Um but I'm gonna answer the next one because it's interesting. Julian, good morning. We are considering the option to enroll our children in a French school but our children neither speak French nor English. Could you give your opinion? I think anytime kids can learn another language, I think it's wonderful, okay? Um so, I think if your children want to do it and they're excited and you want to do it, I would say go ahead and do it. I would say that learning French or English both have an amazing amount of value. Um and at the at the end of the day, even if they don't use the language, I think it's good for their brains to learn too. Um 
I'm going to skip the next one. This one says from Ziza, hello, teacher Bob, your, your videos are literally useful. Well, thank you. I'm glad you find them useful. I do my best to make them as useful as possible. And Foxy Katie says, hi, Bob. I hope you're doing well. I am. Are there mandatory break times at work in Canada? Here, it is mandatory to take a break of at least 30 minutes after six hours of work. So, the general rule is that you get a 10 minute break in the morning, a 30 minute break for lunch and a 10 minute break in the afternoon. But not all jobs have that. That's if you have like a if you're paid by the hour and if you're working eight or nine hours, I think that's the law. But for me as a teacher, there are days where I don't get breaks and there are days where I do get breaks because sometimes we have to have teachers who kind of walk around at lunchtime to make sure students are behaving. Um and then we don't have a morning or afternoon break at all. But my job's a little different because it's it like I'm paid a salary. I'm not paid by the hour. Um and we don't really teach before and after a certain time of the day. So, there's kind of little breaks built in. Hard to say but generally, 10 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes for lunch, 10 minutes in the afternoon. And if your boss is nice, those times will be a bit longer. Uh let's see here. I'm gonna go back here because we are oh wait. I think we have one more question. It just popped up. Dr. Scatman Cash says, hi, when I was working at the hospital, I work at the pharmacy department. Could you please describe working at a hospital? I I did a few fixes as I read that so I didn't read that word for word. I think working in a hospital is rewarding because you're helping people. I think it's hectic sometimes because if you work in the emergency department, um it can be very hectic and I think it can be very challenging as well because sometimes you know what's good for a patient but they don't wanna do it and so you get a little bit frustrated. So, anyways, folks, we're gonna wrap this up. That is the end of the lesson. Thanks to the 409 people that were watching. Remember, there is a subscribe button there if you want to subscribe. Uh I just wanna say uh thanks to Dave and Todd for helping out. You guys are awesome being here every week and let me say bye to a few people. So, bye to Rod, the English teacher. Bye to Pratyusha, Edwin, Gaurav, Sam the Taiwanese, Rod the English. Oh, I said Rod already. (laughs) Let me scroll back here. Uh Brent from Speak English with this guy. Uh Winter Wright or Wright Winter. I know Eugene is here. Lolly Lolly is here. Sam the Taiwanese again. Good to see you, Sam, by the way. Lemon Cute, Gaurav, Nasir. Uh, I'm just scrolling back. Adi the Thai and I know there's a few other uh regulars that were here. Key Park was here. Um and Maria C. Bye to Maria C. as well. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you were able to learn a bit, a few things before you go. Again, different ways that you can help me um on YouTube. One, watch the videos all the way through. Two, watch them twice. Three, share them with other people. There's even clips now. I saw Brent mentioning that in the chat. You can share clips uh with people. There's a little button that says clip and you can share a little segment. Um you can uh join Preply. You can become a member of the channel. If in any way you wanna help out, I appreciate it. But anyways, um look for this lesson in a couple of days. It'll be shorter. There'll be no video viewer questions. Just a pure 25 minute lesson. Uh listen to it again to help train your ear uh and to kind of reinforce what you learned today. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here and uh bye. Have a good day.